but I'll tell you something. Um, so, you know, um, I can't say that, um, you know, life's been easy at times. You know, it's been a struggle and it's been, um, you know, at times frustrating. But I did find myself um, at that time, in that decade, sort of thinking, oh, God, I'm real, like, like a real failure here. Killer, killer, Killer Keller official .com. <laughs> You need the Kellervision app. 24-7 mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top fives, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the App Store for free today. Beatbox created. Killer Keller. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller podcast. <laughs> it's gonna be a good one hello ladies and gentlemen killer killer podcast live and direct central london or central as you need to be choose to be want to be where would you want to be anywhere else big shout to graffitikings.co.uk hold tight all the regulars for sharing and caring you know it's super important comment below tell us what time it is what you're doing how you're doing and whereabouts in the world you are everyone that's got a television app you know what time it is free download iphone app on our app store um, for your street culture sports inside the house right now we have a bit of a hero of mine my fanboy's up to 30 uh this lady here um not only uh, invested early in the punk genre she got onto uh, new romantics soho gone on to do a plethora of different things from fanzines to magazines reporting editorials djing all across west london and beyond <laughs> What are you saying, Princess Julia inside the house? How are you? <laughs> <laughs> Give us a uh, 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 Okay, there. <laughs> how was it? How was it? How was, it? was that good? Yeah, it was a very uh, informative introduction, <laughs> yes. I'd say. <laughs> I got you. Thank you. Yeah. You've lost a few bits out. Well, this is what we're here to do. Isn't yeah, it? we'll be covering those, won't we? When, I mean, big shout Dave Baby, of course, for Dave Baby for hooking us up. Um, your, your history is very much in line with... I don't know. It's the benchmark. It's the beginnings of, and you were totally in the mix of it from the early doors. Again, you know, highlighting the introduction, uh, it doesn't even do it any justice. Uh, you know, reporting on your life as is right now before we get into it. How are you feeling? How are you feeling right now? Um, quite perky. <laughs> <laughs> Considering the uh, the many decades that I've lived through. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling uh, optimistic, I feel. Um, excited. Um, maybe a slightly tentative with some things. Um, watching things unfold, mm. as they do. Mm. Um, Life has a way of doing that, doesn't it? But on the whole, um, I have uh, quite an optimistic and positive outlook on proceedings. Mm. Um, that's probably something that has carried me through. Mm. I always try to see other people's points of view and be excited by them and just have an air of curiosity. Curiosity. <laughs> I think that is most def. If I was to define you in the, the the walks that I've seen you pass and all the interviews you've done, all the conversations of you know from like I say, punk to, through to the eighties, um, new romantics era and, and beyond, the rave mm. culture, um, the the all the genres that you cover, mm. curiosity, curiosity, isn't it? Yeah, that's a thing. Do do you, do you love to? discover things and find things. You seem to be always at the I front, do. forefront of that. <laughs> I do love hearing about what people are up to. I'm quite nosy. <laughs> <laughs> Big up the nosy crew. They're all watching. <laughs> uh, um, but I'm very excited about people making plans. And, uh, you know, if somebody comes to me um, with an idea or uh, something that they've maybe been asked to do i'm the first one in the queue going go on then go on mm -hmm. get it get it mm -mm. go and go on have a go have mm -mm. a go yes <laughs> hell yeah uh, i mean what else is there to do yeah you that's might true as well you I, I said this before you came on and you're for me 
and a, a handful of other people that that are associated with me that that value these areas we talk about and and yourself as in the, in the genre that you are. You're, you're you're almost like the okay sign of uh, the benchmark of creative uh, output, whereby you know you've transcended so many genres and you've just kind of kept going. It's always been like this long-standing thing that you're a part of the London scene, and it's few mm. and far between, man. I, I I am very much part of the London scene, and um, but I also sort of see myself as part of a sort of global scene in actual fact, That's and I've always felt quite sort of international um um I, I, i'm half hungarian anyway so i've got that sort of mood mm. sort of somewhere in me but i've always felt like i'm part of a a, a wider community mm. of um free thinking people mm. could i put it like that yeah, yeah you just did it sounds great um you know so um with that in mind um, I, I feel like the world is a creative collective and everywhere I go in the world and in London, I tend to gravitate towards people that are thinking in the same sort of way as I do. Um, and I think it's really exciting and enlightening and that's one of the reasons that I really do enjoy um, social media mm. is that I feel it sort of galvanises um, an international community, mm. which I find very exciting. It's very positive, isn't it? I, I want to be positive. I don't really want to sit there and go, ooh, it's not like it used to be because obviously nothing's how it used to be because no. that's a different... That was a different time. There were different, different factors yeah. involved. So, yeah. um, you know, I always think everything is like a, um, a continuum. Mm. So yeah. when I when I when I think of um, you know um, subcultures and which is a subject that obviously I'm quite often asked to um, talk about, um, I always think of. Um, the, the sort of threads of creativity spanning the decades. Mm. Like it's all linear, it's all there, it's just one big thread of... So I never really yeah. tend to uh, look back, although I will uh, pay my respects and uh, homage to mm. um, legacies mm. and realise that those moments are important... People and moments mm. are important, but you know, because obviously ideas don't spring out of no. thin air. They're yeah. they're they're coming from somewhere. Mm. So um, I find that really interesting. Yeah, how how sort of things connect and how all those things meld together, mm. and there's always something new. A different way of looking at something, um, a different way of doing something, mm. but with a reference to something that's gone before, obviously, mm. and that makes life exciting. Yeah, it does indeed. And going back to what you were saying about internet and you know the community that is, it, it, it becomes this binding force, doesn't it? And if you've got like-minded people all talking the same language, it's kind of impossible to have any negative energy coming out because you're all in the, the, the think tank of where you are. Um, hopefully. <laughs> That's the theory anyway. <laughs> That's the theory. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, you know, it's, it, it, obviously you don't want to be in an echo chamber no. either too much. But, um, you know, obviously people will disagree or come with different angles mm. of... Um, analysing and going forth with their creative endeavours, mm. um, you know, and that's good as well. It all adds. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Mm. Um, on on socials, you you most definitely do come across as the forward thinking. Uh, <laughs> do I? Yeah, yeah, for sure, <laughs> for sure. They, I mean, this this must, must in, at the same time be reasonably orchestrated because you <laughs> must get a lot of people coming up to you saying can you talk about you know um, 
old school, you know, Steve Strange moments. And th- you must get a lot of those kind of um, people come up to you. Not really. Really? Actually, no, because um, the the world that I'm in is is quite current. Good. You yeah. know, like I, I I'm in a community. Mm. Um, and um, I feel very much part of that community. And some people know um, my illustrious background, mm. but obviously every now and again I get hauled out for to be a talking head on one of those sort of TV-type things, which I'm yeah, happy yeah. to do because I feel it's very important that, um, that, that, it's, uh, that, that sort of blitz kid uh, moment in mm. the late 70s is... Um, you know, represented by um, uh, uh, a, a variance of people that were there, in, that were there in yeah. the scene, and that are still doing stuff today. Mm. Um, so I'm happy to do that. Talk to me about that. Talk to um, me about that that time briefly, because it'd be, <laughs> it'd be yeah, it'd, it'd be interesting because th- there are, although like you say, it was a time, it was an era, and yeah, it's it's incubated in th- this place. But uh, there are similarities, telltales. There's things that if it wasn't for those things, we wouldn't be here talking. I mean, you right. are the media. Before, you were the first of the media. Before this podcast stuff, you were definitely there doing it, spreading the word. Well, you know. a little bit. I mean, I left school in 1976, which I guess was slap bang in the middle of uh, the punk happening moment. Mm. My, my, most, most, of, most people I know of my age, our roots are really in glam rock, mm. actually, which was like the early 70s. Mm-hmm. Um, so that, that was really uh, a pivotal sort of growing up moment. And then really that, that sort of like a, a, a group of people um, in the mid-70s uh, formed a collective. But I was just on the sort of cusp on the edge of that, really. I was just a little bit too young to be involved in the the, the punk scene, although it was happening and um, obviously did know a few key members of that scene mm. Um, which, to my mind, dissipated quite quickly, quickly yeah. because um, by the end of '77, you know, most most of the bands had got signed up. Mm. It was already going into another phase, mm. and it was at that moment that, like, I went into the more, you know, mm. um, the the whoever was left outside of punk. But there was also a very vibrant soul scene going on and disco mm, scene. Mm, 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 mm. So the Blitz really, or the new romantic scene, was a sort of conglomeration of quite a few different scenes like that. There was a rockabilly scene, mm. there was a soul scene, there was um, a disco scene yeah. and then there was the, a punk scene. So that, you know, all in equal measure, mm. those were the sort of like... Uh, uh, collectives mm. of people that were gravitating towards creating this sort of new romantic scene and became um, that part energy. of that. Yeah, when, but um, there were lots of people, you know, and the gay the gay disco scenes really totally, really yeah, important, yeah. you know, because a lot of the time in in the punk scene there were there were lo- lots of gigs. There were a few gigs. People were doing gigs. And then the gigs would end at like eleven o'clock or something, mm. so there'd be nowhere to go. And so the gay scene was the scene where we could all go mm-hmm. and be welcomed. So there were a few clubs that we went to um, in Ells Court, and there was the Sombrero um, over in um, Kensington High Street, and there were these little, you know, enclaves mm. of um, uh, gay discos going on that we would go to as well as and but but out of that um um various groups of people from different scenes um got together and we became known as the sort of new romantics Mm. um and it was very inventive of all the people involved um it was something that wasn't really um uh planned too much. There was a spontaneity to it, 
And really, from from my perspective, it was it was all about getting dressed up and getting ready to go out and mm. just sort of uh, finding a space for us to have some fun. Mm. And um, from that um, catalyst, um, I guess uh, it spawned a sort of platform for the 80s to happen. Yeah. And, it, you know, it was a sort of um, a mixture of, you know, pure bravado and um, instinctual passion to sort of explore um, all these creative outlets. Mm -hmm. So um, I guess that's why um, that, that particular night, which didn't really last that long, it was only a, not even probably a couple of years mm. really, um, is always um, cited as a sort of pivotal moment. Mm. Um, and that place being, was it Gossips? Was it started it... off in a club called um, Billy's right. that later became known as Gossips. There you go, yeah. And then um, pretty quickly um, it was Steve Strange and Rusty moved it to a club that was called The Blitz. There you go, yeah. But it, the, that was the name of the club. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. that title became a tagline mm. for uh, to describe that particular night. Talk to a me Tuesday about... A Tuesday night. A Tuesday night. A Tuesday know. night of being new romantic. Dressing up as new romantic. <laughs> well, too, yeah. it wasn't really a label, to be fair. It was... Um, I mean, we were called lots of different things, like the cult with no name mm. and things like that. So um, that was the media calling us that. But I think we, we didn't really care. Well, no. we, it's not that we didn't care, but we embraced... Mm. We thought it was quite a good title, yeah. I think, actually. And as also long as it wasn't boring, that's the main thing. It was vibrant and lively and alive. Yeah, well, yeah, I guess, yeah. I mean, you know, it was quite an austere time, you know, the late 70s of... Ye olde London mm -hmm. town, mm. <laughs> you know, uh, we were all squatting um, in Warren Street and the surrounding area, and um, but also, uh, you know, as as the seventies became the eighties, um, there was an air of excitement, mm. and um, people were, uh, you know, establishing them establishing themselves in their various creative dis disciplines mm. and um that was exciting youthful wisdom yeah but what well, it it was youthful but also the blitz itself had quite a sort of like um intergenerational clientele mm -hmm. to be fair it was quite a mixture of people it wasn't one just one sector as because Bowie would be there and then Mick Jagger Well, I guess, they, yeah, they came to visit. Mm. Um, but, you know, there were people like Phil Linnett was there. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> so you wouldn't yeah. really necessarily expect, all, yeah. you know. And then there were, like, established people in the music world. A&Rs, um, I suppose, sniffing around. Well, no, right? I don't know if they were, really. No. And then there was sort of us as fashion designers, uh, um, uh, uh um, uh, people at art school, filmmakers, mm. all kinds of people. Oh, God, that's so w cool. Would be pop stars, mm. i.e., uh, a, a very young boy, George, you mm. know, mm. but um, Gary Newman would be there sometimes, you know, that, but they were all starting out. Obviously, mm. Spandau Ballet was a yeah. regular house band. <sighs> Damn. It does sound very exciting, doesn't it? Like, yeah. but I guess but living in this, it was just sort of normal. Like now, I go to a, an event or a club, and it's similar kind of fabulous people. Yeah, yeah, it's the same sort there, of thing. You know, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, in more recent times, um, you know, the lovely Bimini um, from RuPaul's Drag Race. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Paid me a marvelous homage on on that show. Huge, <laughs> huge. And uh, you know, uh, I, I work at a pub. I DJ there, and I'm quite involved in the LGBTQ plus community. Absolutely. And um, I work at a pub called The Glory, 
a lot. And uh, tell that's where, say where, where that is. Whereabouts is that? So. Right, the glory is on the Kingsland Road yeah. um, in uh, the Haggerston Park mm -hmm. um, area. Um, so, um, you know, the people that are there working at the pub, that they, they all do a really like beyond things. They're actors, they're screenwriters, they're designers. So good. You know, yeah. that, that's our bar staff. Yeah. That's just the bar staff. <laughs> yeah. How you long know, have you been there for? How long have you been there well, for? Well, the pub's been there about six years now. So we, you know, mm. um, I feel very much sort of part of it, but I feel very much part of, you know, all, all the clubs in my community that mm. um, I work at. Mm. Um, that could be Dawson Superstore. Um, more recently, I've been DJing at a club called Feel It at the mm -hmm. O'Meara, which is kind of fantastic. Um, that's hosted by Jodie Harsh. Mm. Um, um, where else? Well, uh, mm. there's so many. <laughs> constant. Um, You're yeah, constant. yeah. Um, you really are a spokesperson for for uh, yeah for for scenes and people, aren't I, you? I still really, really do enjoy. A social activity and enjoy clubbing. Mm. Um, it's possible that I wouldn't go out quite so much if I wasn't actually DJing at some of these things, but I do go when I can and I've got the an energy to things as a, a personage. Curiously, um, because you obviously have the experience you mentioned about, you know, the New Romantics, the Blitz, and how there were so many creative people at that were ballooning around at the time. And I'm I'm thinking with the experience you have and nowadays, especially with the you know, the upcoming artists and, you know, potential career shapers of of the industry we're in now, being around you, being bar staff, being in the place where mm. you must see a lot of telltale signs. You must be a really good go to person to see like how how not to do things and how to do things. You must see a I lot of that. First of all, I don't think there's any how to or how not to rules. Right. I would forget about all that. Yeah, I would on. just follow your um, your instincts. How do you get to this point in your mind? Because there'll be a lot of people I, out there, right, that will totally be, yeah, 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 but i got to quickly do this because I'm, you know... Th that's just the nature of the, the world now, isn't it? It's not quick enough. It needs to be do faster. Do you think so? Yeah, man. See, I don't really. I mean, I think it's it's fantastic to have ambition, and have the sort of get go to like make things happen. I really mm. admire that. But I'm much more casual in my approach. You don't. You know, I don't really see that there is a great urgency. But I do. I do see that. Um, you know, there is a compulsion. Mm. Um, in people to get their ideas out and across, and yeah, there can there can be an urgency to do that, um, especially with some of some of the um, situations that um, the the planet is in. Mm. I think it is important, you know, if you if you've got the impetus to to um, to um, create a platform or get something out there ASAP I think that's really inspiring I, I'm on the I'm on the coattails of that though because I don't I don't really feel that I'm um like snappy enough right I need to get below, more please. snappy yeah, yeah no I don't know about that <laughs> I, I need to get more I'm a bit like oh well if it happens it happens you know but your <laughs> social media no I don't I'm not quite there because I feel oh, like really? I feel like you you command you command a, a presence online I, to, of, um, of a lead, of a, a leader leadership level. Really, for real, like you're you're <laughs> totally like you're totally that I person. I think I'm probably just like in the mix. You don't see it. I feel like I'm in the mix and I'm part of some something. Um, you know. Yeah. I don't feel like I'm at the forefront of things. I feel like I'm. Um. Um. In the spirit of something, 100%. you know. but, but you do command. Like there is a there is a tone to which you. All right, I am a bit snobby. <laughs> <laughs> right now, here comes yeah. the podcast. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, 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 I am a bit. I, like, I'm quite particular mm. with my takes, but I think everyone everyone's particular with their 
likes and what they like uh, to be affiliated mm. with and um, what, you know, the sort of things one is interested in. What are you interested in? I'm what's interested the, the thing? in people um, exploring um, surprising um, facets of their creative lives. Mm. I'm interested in their stories. Um, I'm interested in my own uh, angles mm. of um, and situations and um, outpourings as well as, you know, I sort of see it as a whole sort of thing. So there's no, there's no, um, there's no, there's no time it, on I it. I see it's... myself as part of something. Oh, I see. Okay. Um, it's, and it, I'm it, really um... into... You know, if I do go to something, I'll post about it. I'll talk about it, and um, mm. it's exciting. It's you love the it, news. It? Yeah, it's the news. <laughs> it's the news. Yeah, you know, you and I'm really it. into it. You yeah, know, yeah. Um, uh, I'll carry on. Yeah, no, it's just <laughs> you said the news, and I was thinking, wow, it really is. You do create, and this is again just going back to your editorial work, the things that you've done from fanzines to magazines to all these different things. You've always been the broadcaster. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, you kind of like, you, you dip your toe you in. What, I'll tell you something. Um, so, you know, um, I can't say that, um, you know, life's been easy at times. You know, it's been a struggle and it's been, um, you know, at times frustrating to um, sort of understand um, yourself and what, what you can do. Well, you can do anything really, but, mm. you know... Um, laugh throws you some obstacles from time to time and you just think, oh, bugger. Mm. You know, um, I'm not really being very successful in that avenue of mm. crea my creative life or whatever. Uh, or I'm lonely or, I'm, you know, not, not majorly happy about mm. this situation. Mm. And, uh, and I do feel like um, in the 80s, I did, although it was an exciting time, and I, you know, it was, and there were brilliant. There's always brilliant people around, and I, I've always been in a, um, or gravitated towards groups of people that I felt that we all had like-minded ideas and mm. ways of looking at things, and that's been fantastic, and mm. still is. Mm. Um, but I did find myself um, at that time in that decade, sort of thinking. Um, I've I've not really focused in on one thing, and I looked around me and I saw lots of my friends becoming quite successful mm. um, and very focused at their crafts and uh, artistic artistic endeavours, uh, and I felt a bit like, oh God, I'm real, like a real failure here because I, I'm just pottering around doing the coat check and working on the door of a club and mm. you know and doing doing a bit of bit of you know I was doing sort of bits and bobs here and there mm. and making up um, the numbers sort of thing yeah I just to do a little bit of knitwear actually and then I did a I did a little bit of modeling but mm. I'm not really a model mm. uh, archetypal type model especially in like the 80s, though it was, well, it was you, well yeah. backward then. Yeah. I mean, you know, diversity, forget yeah. it. No, no, no. I yeah, mean, yeah. it was... It was <laughs> Gone. It was, no, it just, yeah, no, it just hadn't, you know, it wasn't really till the late 80s mm. and till magazines like ID and The Face had really um, sort of, like, encouraged um, the idea of, um, uh, you know, uh, stereotypes being broken. Mm. And and the idea of these straight up, you know, the the photographic style mm. of a straight up and street fashion. Yeah, yeah, which and became a real thing, didn't and it? And that oh. became a thing. But it was those sort of magazines that were, in, you know, especially ID, were in mm. sort of encouraging it. Mm. Um, so I, I sort of find myself sort of, you know, at that time, sort of sort of meandering around and not really being 
very focused. I did do a bit of DJing in the um, early 80s. I did at the WAG Club, mm, which mm. I was also the cashier lady of as well. <laughs> See, not, not, not content with being the DJ, she, she greeted at the door as well. No, yeah. no, 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 not on the same night. Oh, of, I was going to say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you could do anyway. Yeah, 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 yeah. You could do. But so then I, you know, I sort of thought, well, I, you know, I'm just doing all these different things. But actually, skip like, you know, a few decades down the line. And actually, um, especially in this last lockdown, because I can sort of diversify and, like, do lots of different things, mm. it's actually been a great asset. Mm. All of a sudden you've realised what you can do and well, I can where do, you can take it. I can do all sorts of things. Mm. And actually that old adage of saying you're like you're master of none and mm. yeah. something of the, all the other, mm. what, what's that adage? Mm. Almost like a jack of trades, but it doesn't, yeah, 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 it doesn't that, even that thing. doesn't even come into yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You You've know, got to be. I think that you know. I think really, if you're creative, you can um, you can sort of you know navigate yeah. um, various creative disciplines, mm. and they are all connected mm, in are. some sort of way. You know, being creative means you're communicating mm. and that's what humans do they want to communicate want to with communicate. E with each other and on the, and on various sort of levels money used to be the the bind, the the thread of everything but now i feel like that jack of trades analogy it's it's actually media that becomes the thread it becomes the way in which you put out your content it's almost like oh. do you know what i'm saying do you get where I'm coming from? It's like you're really, really apt at like doing one thing, which is a I don't know. You could be into knitting or sewing, but then on the same breath, you're doing DJ sets or you're doing, um, you know, mini documentaries. But all of that is built around your time and how you execute it and put it out to the world. And I've done all those things, yeah. and I still do all those things. Yeah. Actually, it's um, amazing, including knitting on occasion. Mm. I've not. Picked up some needles for quite a while, but you never know. Well, you're friends with Pam Hogg and the likes of these finer characters. Um, big up Pam, big up Judy Blaine, rest in peace. You know, all these people that, you know, who are part of your the landscape in the fashion world, right? Um, I'm friends with... Um, I'm interested in fashion and um, as... as uh, uh, because I'm, I... I'm not actually really in the fashion world as such, but mm. I, because I love wearing it and mm. I'm interested in it, I am around fashion mm. and um, various fashion um, designers mm. and creators um, a lot, actually. Yeah, you seem to <laughs> but be... But also, yeah. in, uh, you know, um, and I, I think there's a lot of designers um, up and coming are uh, established that I'm very interested in and interested in wearing. Mm. And and it goes right across the board. You know, it could be something like Nazir Mazhar's um, Fantastic Twirls mm. mm. pop-up shop and the curated designers that Nazir um, chooses to be part of, of that collective. Mm. Um, then um, there's... Um, uh, uh, designers that show over Fashion Week mm. or create films over Fashion Week. And they can be quite sort of mainstream yeah. designers um, or, or quite sort of, you know, underground, just doing it off their back kind of I love those ideas. Of when you you've know. seen something from the beginning just growing and crystallising yeah, and yeah. like that. But I, I'm really interested in process and so I'm always really uh, fascinated by, um, you know, how people go about creating different looks. Because each one's different. Everyone things. deals yeah, with things yeah. differently, don't they? And in fact, I did a campaign um, with um, McQueen, actually, um, over lockdown and um, they, they actually, because I was like, I really enjoy your... Um, you know, um, uh, videos that sort of show um, people, um, you know, uh, create their creative process. Mm. 
mm. a lot. And they they actually t- said to me, oh, yeah, they're uh, really, that people really love those. They're, they're really popular. So I always think that's really fascinating. People like Matty Boven, mm. who is really into craft, is fantastic. Um, uh, I, I think that sort of idea of process is really fascinating. And even, you know, like it's, it's the behind the scenes, isn't it? You yeah, know, even when curtains. people are making videos yeah. and things, there's a lot of that going on. I love that. I did a lot of pop videos over lockdown, you know. Yeah, I <laughs> noticed. I noticed, <laughs> so, yeah. Because it seemed to be that you could do shoots and pop videos. Yeah. And, so, like, and get away with murder because know, like, everyone else is in the same doing, thing. Yeah, you know, it's all like strict, but mm. um, I really enjoyed doing those. So, um, How many videos have you been in in the past? Loads. Talk to me about loads. loads. Give me... But the most recent ones I've done yeah. is I, th- I was in the Kylie video just now. Come Kiss on. Kiss of Life. Come on. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> With Jesse Ware. That was lols. Yeah. <laughs> I love. <laughs> I did a Celeste video. Yeah. I was in a, a Wolf Alice video, but I mostly ended up on the cutting room floor. Oh, really? Yeah, that was directed by... Um, As requested or not? Did Jordan you... Hemingway, <laughs> who really had the gorgeous... <laughs> Calling news to tell me uh, that I, I was on the cutting room floor. How very dare I've you! I've been brutally edited. Yes, was the word. brutal. So um, anyway, you know, um, but it was still lots of fun doing it. Mm. Um, Does it take a lot? Because when, like you're saying, you know, oh, we are all human. We all go through this stuff. I'm mean, God. Like, give me half an hour by myself in a place, and uh, you know, <laughs> it's enough to drive my, myself uh, into a misery. But uh, in fairness, when you're a walking, talking brand and you're constantly, because it is, you are, you're your own person. Yeah, yeah. It must be quite quite an upkeep, not not obviously not from a, on a day-to-day, do you know what I mean? Like keeping your morale up, keeping it, because you know, being on a cutting room floor on any level is like, well. I didn't really care. What did I do? Uh, no, I didn't, I didn't mind. I just know that like, you know, that can happen. Yeah. You, sometimes you are edited out of things, um, photo shoots and things, and it doesn't, it doesn't worry me at yeah. all, actually. Where did I go? What did you oh, do? I do feel like I've got egg on my face. <laughs> <laughs> I um well far from it, and I feel like I feel I don't like don't mind that though. You, you mean, get on with it. Yeah, you know it's, it's whatever. I, I had a nice time doing it. Mm. You've just got to like live every day, haven't you? You've and like you say, like... you like the process. So the process yeah. in that is more important than the execution well, of the delivery. No, it's all part. It's all important, but mm. um, not, not, none's really more important than the other. Mm. But. Um, uh, I do make the most of, you know, mm. these moments mm. I've, you know, lucky enough to be part of. Mm. It doesn't it doesn't worry me. I mean, yeah. you know, what can you do? Yeah, yeah, just keep on going. I've done photo, got great photo shoots and I've not, but I've suddenly not been in the final edit. <laughs> <laughs> cost me, cost me at least out 15. Of history again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and that's that actually is far from true. I mean, again, just just going back to uh, you know the, the the precursor conversation of you know you've done a lot of um, yeah you've done a lot of pundit based stuff where you're talking about certain eras, certain times, um, and you know looking at looking at that extensively and the fact that it all the inception of it was all in the DIY the the you can do it yourself that really does even in conversations that I've you know you really know how to do this stuff in a very DIY uh, you, yeah. get on with it way I, I love that how you you've got this sort of like idea that I'm, <laughs> I I know what I'm doing <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing <laughs> I'm just making it up. I know what I don't want to do. <laughs> yeah. What don't you want to do? I don't want, I know what, I know, you know, I've got a certain philosophy yeah. that I apply to things and um, I will only too happily tell people um, uh, that um, in order to uh, be a successful human, um, there's certain ideas that I feel we don't have to live by, sort of rules that society has made up for us to control us. Give me an example of those rules. Well, I just feel, you know, when you're... It's something, it's like an an indent that you're 
you carry on from your parents mm. to if you do have children to your, you know, you may do this thing, which is a sort of social conditioning mm. type of idea that you have to be doing certain things at certain stages of mm. your life in order to be a successful human. Mm. And I actually think that those rules are bollocks. <laughs> mm -hmm. The idea that, like, by the age of 20, you should be in some sort of relationship, mm. generally a heterosexual one, mm. that's bollocks. It's bollocks. The idea that by a, your mid-twenties or thirties you're supposed to be married with a house and a mortgage mm. and all the rest of it, that's bollocks too. Bollocks. Um, <laughs> I'm with you. I, you know, I feel, and um, my parents actually said to me what a huge disappointment they felt I was because I didn't follow those rules. And lots of, and I feel that we should be living in a modern age where those rules are just not applicable anymore. But they actually are applicable mm. and I meet young people now that still have to navigate that, that kind of idea because yeah. it's, like, ingrained into us. In the DNA, it's literally, you know, uh, yeah, from birth, it's what you're forced to believe. Another thing that I am really into, I'm so glad that I'm alive in the age that I'm in, is the whole aspect of being non-binary. Mm. I feel very passionate about that and I'm really glad that that is a thing mm. because I've always felt that... Uh, that the human race isn't so sort of cut and dry. Mm. And even in those, you know, my, my formative years, which I guess would be, you know, the mid-70s, mm. you know, yeah. to late 70s, and the new mm. romantic era, mm. we, we, in, that, in that sort of, like, environment, um, sexuality and what sex you were... What wasn't a question mm. and wasn't a thing that we really discussed. We just accepted all of each other as yeah. as 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 is, as yeah. you know, as is. And to me, that was the the perfect world. But That's once you be, step yeah. outside of that community, then you realise, mm. oh, it's not really like that in the real world. Mm. You've got to be cut and dry this or cut and dry that and, and there's the nothing in between. Yeah. And if you're not part of that, you're a freak yeah. and an outcast. Which is, is it just so bad. So I am, that's one thing I think the modern, the, the, the age that we live in now has caught up with that idea in a, in a mainstream way mm. and it is because of, you know, social media. You know, so I, I think that is a really inspiring the um, moment mm. and that we actually do live in a time where there are positive things going on. Constant chipping of the creative... It's like when you think of all the cultures that have moved forward, the progress stage by stage, generation by generation... It's almost like... Well, it's like two steps forward and then two steps... Yeah, a little bit. It's a bit going a bit back because I thought we were going forward. I mean, in the 80s, we were going forward and then with the AIDS uh, crisis, we mm. went right back again. Yeah, yeah. But we were really going forwards. Mm. And then by the end, from the beginning to the end of the 80s, it went right back. Yeah, back back again. It, 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 uh, I mean, uh, it's shocking, really. Society has a really... A unfortunate way of being super slow on the pickup. I think maybe some of us creative people have a little bit forward thinking, overly forward thinking. I think the idea of it is beautiful, but like it's almost like we're always six months ahead of everything and then we've got to tell everyone to catch up. It's actually quite hard. I think we're more than that. I think we're five years ahead. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. Yeah. How do we get people up to speed? How do we do that? I think it's just, um, you know, dismantling yeah. uh, certain... Um, the system. Systems that are in place that don't seem to be budging. At all, yeah. You know, so, yeah, I, well. 
<laughs> yeah, I know. I think that's my soapbox moment now. And I think you just smacked it out of the park. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Um, this will not be on the cutting floor. No way. Not on this watch. Uh, I do feel you a lot in the sense that you... Uh, what's it, what did it... 50 Cent once said it, you know. Um, progress is a slow process. And uh, sometimes you just got to be there waiting for the opportunity, you must have seen so many different cycles, whether it's fashion or, you know, or opinions, um, clubs come and go and then resurgence of new styles that kind of hark back to a certain era. So I know yeah. I do. Yeah, that must be quite... Uh, do you know what I like? Go on. I, I like this, like, continuum of um, raving. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah. It's really good fun. And, um, and I... Um, uh, I'm always very fascinated by, um, you know, I came up on, on um, you know, my, my favourite music is disco and that's what I came up on. Studio 54 really. kind of stuff. Well, even before then, really. really? Yeah, like, um, and going all, all the way down, you know, I love dance music mm. and, um, you know, house music and rave music and blah, mm. it's all disco to me mm. um, in its various um, forms. And um, I really established myself in the um, sort of mid to late 80s as a DJ mm. um, um, because before that, really, DJing wasn't really a proper job. Mm. Um, but it, it sort of became, by the 90s, it became a proper job for people to do. Mm. And um, I've enjoyed and still enjoy DJing a lot, actually, but what really uh, um, bemuses me is that, you know, in retrospect, you know, uh, that sort of like house music was the late 80s really coming up. It's like 30 years ago. Mm, but still, mm. that that style of music doesn't have a sort of vintage retro feel attached no. to it. It's still really modern. Mm, it's true. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I it do. really is. And even now it's come in and out of the mainstream and yeah. la di da di da you know, dance music, disco music, house music, whatever you want to call it, mm. four to the floor, mm. still retains an element of modernity to yeah, yeah, it. Yeah, totally. That is always like... It doesn't sound retro. No, I agree with you. You know, there's another genre. Drum and bass is very much like that as well. It, yeah. It's never in the kind of... Uh, it, it has its time in the sun. Obviously, there's a few moments of Yeah, yeah, of and it comes back round again but, in but, but generally, various ways. The only difference is, though, I mean, apart from the small tweaks, in well, house music especially, apart from the small tweaks in, I don't know, mixing and the way people hear things sonically as a production piece, there is no date to it. It doesn't feel like it I ever... I think maybe... Do you mean? What is that? What do you think that could be? Because I think I'm a great fan of electronica. Mm, it's electronica. I know that, you know, all, all that music, mm. uh, drum and bass, mm. disco, house, mm. everything, it's all electronica. Mm, it is. Nothing, I don't get, I, I get off Isn't on, it? yeah, totally, craft work. Even if you play everything. that now, it kicks ass. Every time. <laughs> Every time. <laughs> like, craft work is Every it, time. really. And, and That's then, from like the like early 70s. And it just doesn't, work. it sounds new. It's so good, isn't it? Yeah. Moog music. It is. It's electronic, isn't it? Moog. Yeah. Moogie. <laughs> Moogie and groovy. Yeah. <laughs> but it is, isn't it? It's got a real, it's got a real um, youthfulness and kick to it that doesn't feel. It's all one and the same. It's all one and the it same. It just still sounds really modern. Yeah. And I'm, I mean, Moog music really, the, the Moog that was that really is changed the, everything. The fifties. Yeah, yeah. Changed the whole. You can apply that to anything. And it, it well, retains that's, that's a level. Well, that's where I am regarding music. Can you play the Moog? Uh, no, I can't play it. You should have well, a go. I think that's yeah, probably the maybe. next step there. But, um... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I have had a go at um, doing music production and remixes and doing vocals on things. Yeah, I was going to say. Sort of like, I've, done, I've done quite a lot of things and I'm up for doing them again, to mm. be fair, because I, I do do things... Like that, and it's it's interesting to me. You've got um, a rich London accent. I can imagine that goes really well as a narrative. <laughs> Are you originally from London? Yeah, I am. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah, you've got the swag. Yeah, I can tell. Um, so, uh, 
um, I'm interested in exploring um, um, different kinds of ways of making music. Totally, yeah. Yeah. Because there are, you know, it's very easy to make music nowadays. Anyway, you know, it's super easy. Yeah, <laughs> and it's lots of fun. It's lots of fun. Yeah, uh, I like uh, to keep the fun element into things. Well, yeah, I and mean, I guess the quicker, <laughs> in terms of easiness and approach, it's like the quicker you can get an idea down, the more playful it is, the more fun it is, right? Yeah, that's what that's the great thing about technology now. Yeah. Have you ever had an addiction? Um, I'm not. I don't think I'm o an overly addictive. Uh, person. So you've never had be... like a drug addiction? No, I like do like a drink. I've got a drink. Yeah. Uh, problem. What's, what's your... <laughs> well, that you haven't got one, or that? No, that you're... I, I, I have had um, drink drinking issues in mm. the past, um, which I have um, addressed, mm -hmm. and also around food mm. um, is is very difficult on on occasion. Mm -hmm. Um, feeling comfortable in your own skin is also a, a thing that um, concerns yeah. me and probably other humans as We're well, you know. Mm. That, um, uh, it, it's a thing, mm. you know. So I think that's, that's just, you know, in a way, for me personally, it's, you know, part of being human, I guess. Um, question. Uh, I have been depressed in the past on certain... At certain times, you know, and uh, my way of coping with that sort of mood, if it does take me over, is that, you know, I, I, it means I'm alive and I can feel things mm. and um, I, I've got feelings, mm. you know. I'm not without empathy. I'm not without sensibilities. Mm. Um, and sometimes those feelings are very painful um, do you keep that in? Do you keep that in? Uh, 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 if, if uh, um, I don't, um, you know, as I've got older, I've um, not got so um, embroiled mm. in, a, in a in a downward spiral. Yeah. So I've managed to recognise the feeling and then address it quite quickly. Mm. Um, How quick's quick? Is this is this a know, day or two? Yeah, or? like yeah. you know, quickly. You yeah. know, just sort of like if something's upset me, mm. like there's there's triggers. There's always triggers, aren't there? What are the biggest triggers? Triggers. I triggers can't imagine there'd be too many triggers. What, Things mean... can trigger you. Things can trigger you. Social media. Such as puts anything. Things on social media can mm. trigger trigger you. You know, mm. it's just what what your thing is and what you're going to get triggered by. Mm. And and. Go, going about sort of addressing and coping with those triggering moments, which can be incredibly difficult. Yeah, it can be. I think we all have triggering moments. Yeah, every everyone, and you don't realise it until you're in it. You know, but <laughs> on on the on you know once again, sort of trying to turn things into some sort of positivity is that the the fact that you're triggered means that you're. Emotional, you're a human, you've got mm. feelings, mm. you can feel things, you can see things, you mm. you know, it's mm. not it's not bad that you're triggered. Mm. You sort of have to embrace and then go forward yeah. with that knowledge. And knowledge is power. Especially within oneself. Yeah. Do you think people get uh and again, just staying on the positive tip, because um there is answers to these things. Um, and you're a very good person to uh, yeah, as a gauge. You, um, I feel like maybe you, to be quick off the mark, the knowledge yourself, knowing when you're in a certain place in your head, a lot of people don't don't always conclude that. They think I don't know. They ex they no, execute really in different hard. ways, don't they? They 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 will comment something negative or uh, display a, a a level of negativity or aggression towards other people when really. They really need to own their pain and work it out and know what. Yeah, but it's, share it's the information. to that point, you know. Yeah. That's uh, you know that's somebody's journey yeah. that they have to recognise and explore. Yeah. I'm not a psychiatrist or counsellor in any way, shape, or form, but mm. you know, obviously, people do come to me with. Um, issues and you know I can only explain things from my own perspective and I always make that point you know that it may or may not be helpful my own experience but uh, you know if it me. is 
if if it is helpful, then that's a good thing. But I really, you know, I'm not um, uh, um, informed enough a lot of the time to, you know, uh, be really maybe help that much, but I can help a bit in my way. But, um, you know, if, mm. if, you know, being human, the human condition is a very complex sort of uh, um, situation. Mm. And and it's weird being a human. It's weird. <laughs> it's weird being a human out it's, here. It's really weird. It's peoply out there, isn't it? There's a lot of it's, things to consider. Yeah. Does it get too peoply for you? <laughs> Do you I know think, what I'm saying? I think we all we all I think we all create our own um spaces and places and communities. Um do you think a lot of people um, understand that? Do you think people understand that from a from a from a West London perspective to a Princess Julia perspective? <laughs> to a, do you think people are you happy that maybe it's not for everyone? You know what I mean? If 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 you don't like it, you can go and do something. Or are you more embracive than that? Do, do you want people to understand it? I think the main thing is to sort of understand yourself, yeah, and then go forth mm. because. Even self, the voyage of self discovery is is very complex, yeah. and you can find yourself doing things or saying things at times that you think, "No, that's not me. Not Why me. am yeah, I even yeah, saying totally. that?" Totally. Mm. So be more. you know, it's a continual learning mm. curve, and oh, I'm not afraid to stand up and say I'm wrong. Mm. I don't think I'm right a lot of the time. I'm always learning things. I'm always trying to like widen my horizons, and I mm. think from that maybe that's a good enough foundation to mm. go forth and just be present. You're historically correct, and you've got empathy. Uh, 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 Do you know what I mean that's a huge thing? That's why probably people come up to you, and it's it's okay, sign, because you're historically correct. Your empathy, your forward thinking. That's why people come to you and ask for advice. Oh, right, okay, you've worked it out for yeah. me. Thanks. It's up there. It's up there. <laughs> thank I've got you. It. Thank it's you. It. It's up there. It's well, up there. Well, you know, I just think people creating things, saying things, doing things, standing their ground for what they believe in, it's all important, isn't mm. it? Mm. Um, dressing the way they want. Do what the fuck well, you want. Yeah. Um, not not being so upset about what other people think of them. Yeah. You know, that's quite damaging. Do you I think feel. people get in the way of themselves sometimes? Sometimes, to their own maybe. Ambitions? Yeah, sometimes. Have you ever done no, that? No, uh, maybe they maybe they don't, but I think society's um conditioning yeah. gets in the way because you 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 think that's what you're meant to be doing mm. because that's what society's told you yeah. you're meant to be doing. Totally. So it takes some element of uh, bravado to step away from from that because mm. there, there is a sort of sense of comfort in, um, you know, conforming mm. maybe. Mm. Or, um, well, the thing is, I don't really think I'm not conforming, but I, I, when I look at the bigger picture, I do sort of think, well, I've not really done any of those things. No, no. But you see, you're, so, yeah. that, that society's told me to do. Which is so fucking cool. Which I sort of, you know, it, I mean, it basically started when I was at school when I was told off for wearing too much makeup at age 14. Jeez. <laughs> oh. I was told to go home and scrub my face. Really? <laughs> yeah. Damn. And, and things like that. And I was just like, why that? And then my father trying to sort of make arranged marriages for me when I was. Yeah, 15, you know. That was a thing? Bringing, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Because that was a thing, you know, that. Hungarian, you know. Uh, yeah. They like the the, the 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 girls of the family have to be married off wow. pretty quick. How did you, you know, escape things, that? I just, I just, well, I just looked very like, what, what are you even, why are you doing those yeah. things, Dad? Yeah. 
<laughs> Why are you saying those things? Are your parents and still around now? Then I did a bit of research and then I realised, oh... Yeah, yeah that's part okay, of the course. Yeah, OK, it was part of the thing, you know. That's are your what... parents still around oh, now? Oh, no, no. Did they... I'm an orphan now. OK. But did you... Did you um, was there, was there a mm. was there a uh, a levelling of of they they then understand what you're about? Or do you, oh, did, you, do you know, think that ever got cleared? I think um, my, dad, my parents were that sort of silent generation that right. don't really question very much. Did, right. it, did it ever settle? Did the, did the decision that you made and their outlook change? Uh, you know, as they got older, did they accept that this was? This no, was no, oh. not really. No. Does that trouble you? No, no. Good for you. I just sort of think that just. People of a different, different time. Different time. I felt a bit sorry for them, really. Yeah. It's hard, isn't it? Uh, yeah. So, you know. I wonder what they think about the whole COVID thing and the, the injections and oh, stuff. Oh, my poor mum. She was very confused. Mm. And then she died. Mm. Rest in peace. <laughs> R.I.P. Poor dear. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you so much for joining That's us, all Princess right. Julia. Legend inside the place, come on. And still, Future Ford, she's the contender in the game. No mucking about. Thank you so much. Yeah, I have a lot of fun. Yeah, it's been good, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. <laughs> Kept so. us out of I trouble. Hope, I hope now, I've so. enlightened you somewhat. You've enlightened all of us. Um, Can yeah. May it continue as well? You have to come around for yeah. a second, cha second chat, another chat. Okay. Yeah? Mm. Bada bing, bada boom. I'll tight everybody. Killer Killer Podcast, striking with a vengeance once again. Yeah, you look after yourselves. Don't talk to anyone I wouldn't. Thank you, Julia. Thank you. Stay lucky now. Mm -hmm. Peace. What was that? What was that for you? I think that's all right.